Hi, welcome to Replicate this After Effects version, After Effects edition, rather, problem number three of Reese Track. Let's get immediately started by importing the Illustrator file that has been posted on Learning Suite. That is called, I believe, Race Track 3 Racetrack 4AE. This is a pre layered file. You don't need to go in and do any releasing to layers. So let's select our Illustrator file and go down to Import As. It's not going to be footage, it's going to be a composition, and we're going to retain layer sizes as we so often do. All right, now as you are well aware of, when you import a new composition with layers, retaining layer sizes, it actually gives you a new composition. And the way that we open that is by double clicking on the composition. Okay, first thing I want to change here is, well, my timeline is 12 minutes long for some reason, but I also want to change the background color of my racetrack. So how do we do that? How do we change anything regarding the composition, command K or composition, composition settings? Command K, memorize it. Background color, I'm going to make it a grassy color, a nice grass-ish color. A nice cartoonishly grassy color. <clears throat> I'm also going to change the duration. Uh, I need, I don't know, 30 seconds? Probably only need about 10. Let's do 15, just to be safe. And since I don't like those wonky numbers, I'm going to change that to 15. Seconds and no frames. 30 is good. Square pixels should always say square pixels, never anything else. And click OK. All right, I think we're good to go here. All right, so what we're going to do here is have this car drive around this track. Shockingly enough. And the way we're going to do that is with the position keyframe. So why hesitate? Let's just get started here by clicking Option P to set, or Alt P if you're on a Windows machine. Option P sets a position keyframe, right? Okay, the way we're going to do this, instead of trying to time the speed of the car at first, we're just going to drag the car. I'm going to jump forward on the timeline 10 frames at a time, dragging the car as far as we need to go. Basically, we're going to drag it up to the beginning of each curve every 10 frames. Now, it sounds complicated, so let's, let me just show you what I mean. All right, we've already got our starting keyframe. So to jump 10 keyframes, if you recall from problem number two, shift command or command shift right directional arrow key makes us jump or allows us to jump 10 frames. Here, I'm going to go to zero. To get to the zero on your timeline, to get to home essentially, uh, zero seconds on your timeline, option command left arrow on a laptop or the home key if you're on an actual extended real keyboard. So, jumping 10 frames, command, shift, right directional arrow key. Okay, this happens a lot. I'm going to undo that, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit more, so I won't do that anymore. There we go. I'm going to drag them to the beginning of this curve. I'm going to jump 10 more frames, command, shift, right directional arrow key. I'm going to drag them to the exit point of this curve, to the in point of this curve right here, 10 more frames. Notice I'm not worrying about rotation or speed or the shape of the path or anything like that right now. I'm just getting the car positioned at the beginning and at the end of every curve. He is wildly drifting at this point. Ten frames. Uh, let's see. Yeah, that's a curve, so we better do that. I'm gonna have to fix that after the fact. Move. Move. Now this one is kind of a compound curve, so I'm going to try just dragging him all the way over here at the out point of this 180 degree half circle, and here. Again, it gets a little complicated in here. So I am just going to put a point here at the apex, at the far left of this circle, and at the bottom of this circle, uh, the same circle, bottom of this curve. 
Let's see, I think I'm going to need two points here, just for accuracy's sake. And then I'm going to put another one there. And another one, where I'm going to eyeball him being in the exact same spot that he started. Okay. Okay, you see we've got a big mess as far as motion paths are concerned, and we've got a big mess as far as him sliding around curves. Let me just preview the humorous driving non-skills of this race car driver. <laughs> he's driving on the grass, he's going in reverse, he's just sliding perfectly sideways. Okay, nothing good about that. He would not be able to race with NASCAR or the Sprint Car, Sprint Cup Circuit. Let's see, I'm going to go to zero, and I'm going to zoom out by hitting minus on my keyboard. Plus and minus, zoom in and out of your keyboard. Many of you are confused as to these number labels at the top of your timeline and are wondering, why does it say S, why does it say F? Just know that if you're seeing Fs and only Fs, you're probably zoomed in a lot. If you're seeing Ss, like I am here, two seconds, four seconds, six seconds, that means you're zoomed all the way out. You can either drag on this zoom slider down here, or you can use plus and minus on your keyboard. Okay, and if it doesn't allow you to see any more than two or three seconds, change your duration. <clears throat> I think the first thing that we should do to fix this is, let's fix the motion path. To a visual person, that's the thing that probably bothers you the most. Let's just get these handles pointing in the direction they should be. Okay, that's not quite as far out on the bottom or top. There we go. So you can see that we just need to go through now and straighten out our handles on the straightaways, lengthen our handles on the curves. Let's see if this works as well as I think it should. Yes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Your driver isn't a perfect driver. Uh, let's see. I'm going to move this point back. There we go. Yeah, we're all messed up up here. This is the one I said I was going to fix before. This handle needs to go down here. Again, I said it didn't have to be perfect, but then I'm trying to make it perfect. Yours does not have to be perfect. It just has to essentially stay on the road. Okay. I may end up fast-forwarding this part, so you don't have to sit here and staking would watch me do this although maybe you're doing it along with me so who knows this one can often be tricky getting through this curve these don't generally have to be straight up and down these handles I should have some background music here Or at least the Benny Hill theme song. Okay. Curve, extend, curve. You've probably noticed from the distance of the dots, the dots that represent the frames, that our car is not going to be going the correct speed. He's not going to be going a consistent speed or even any sort of logical speed. Move that point over. There we go. Okay, that's going to be enough. Option slash to center my comp up to 100% in my comp window. Okay, that looks good. Let's preview it. He's still going to be a little bit wonky. The speed's going to be all over the place, but at least he's somewhat staying on the road now. Oh, he goes really fast up there at the top. Okay. Let's fix the rotation. Did you know that there was a way for After Effects to automatically rotate, automatically orient? Since our car was pointing, here, let's go to the beginning. Option Command, left arrow. We're at zero on our timeline. Our car is pointing in the direction we want him to go. So if I select my car layer and go to Layer, Transform, Auto Orient, and, ch and select the radio button, Orient Along Path, and click OK, you will be amazed. I guarantee it. See how he deftly navigates the corners of this very tricky Monte Carlo-style racetrack? I don't know if it's Monte Carlo-style. That's just something I've heard. Indy 500? No, that's just an oval. Okay, 
So that's good. We've got our path fixed. We've got our car turning, navigating corners like we want them to. Now we just need to fix the speed. Since we were just jumping 10 frames, regardless of how long the car had to travel, we have some erratic speeds here. We are going to fix this by converting all of our keyframes, which we can drag select, or we can... The more efficient way is to just click the word position and note how all of my position keyframes got selected. We're going to... let me show you where it comes from. Animation, keyframe interpolation, rove. <clears throat> so this bottom drop down here under keyframe interpolation is called roving. And right now it's locked to time, but we're going to select rove across time. Click OK. You'll see that something interesting happens to our keyframes down here. Oops, I just zoomed into my comp window. Greater than, less than is a good way to zoom into your comp window. That's not what I want to do right now, though. I wanted to zoom into the timeline a little bit. So the first and the last keyframes are still the regular linear diamonds that we're used to seeing, but all of these inner keyframes, roved keyframes, are circles, which means that we can't really edit them. One of the advantages of having roved keyframes is that if I take this very last keyframe and I scale down or up, all of the keyframes remain proportionally equidistant or distant from each other. Let's just see what the speed is. Let's see if he's going fast enough. That's a pretty good speed. I don't think that we need to contract or expand our keyframes at all. Just know that that capability is there for roved keyframes. Yeah, he's that's probably a good speed. Okay, I think that's all we need to know. And now we're done. See you on the next tutorial.